Check this out. Can you see this? Can you see this on camera? Bash my hand on a fan over here. My work is dangerous. Hello humans, my name is Dale Kingsmill. How are ya? How's it going? Now you all have been very lovely suggesting to me mythology videos that I have to redo, revamp, get back up on the channel. This is why is there always a little bit of bunting hanging in my... Every time, I'm just a festive person. I can't... This is who I am. You can't change me. And you've all made excellent suggestions, but I'm ignoring them because my mother asked me to do Prometheus. And quite frankly, my mum wins. <laughs> so here we are, the story of Prometheus. Nestles in quite neatly with the last myth that we did. Yes, it does. So Titanomachia, the Titans v the Olympians, who's gonna be gods of the people. Or actually, not so much, not yet, because uh, my personal favorite rendition of the Promethean uh, story is that Prometheus was the creator of mankind. It gets a little complicated, there are all these different ages of men, and it's all clouded up because Hesiod just is, he's real unhappy about society. But if we want to keep it simple, let's just say Prometheus invented people. See, Prometheus was a wise guy. He's a wise dude. His name literally means thinking ahead, which by the way is why he sided with the Olympian gods in that whole war thing. So there you go. He's like buddy buddy with Athena, you know, after after he helps uh, deliver her. That's another story. We'll get to that another time. Just don't worry about it. They're friends. They're wisdom buds. And one day Prometheus is messing around with some clay. He's putting some sticks in there. He's like making snow men but out of dirt and he goes you know what you know what would make this better if it was alive let's bring it to life and boom people we're all just mud in the end but Zeus hates people Zeus thinks that people are the ugliest little things he has ever seen he doesn't like us at all which really sets us up for just the trajectory of the rest of Greek mythology, doesn't it? So Zeus tries to zap us all to death. He wants to, to kill us and wipe us out of existence. But Prometheus and Athena are like, no, please, no, keep the people. The people are great. Please don't kill them. And Zeus is like, fine. But here's the deal. They got to make offerings to me all the time. Me and all my buds in this Olympian, uh, you know, circuit. Circuit? That's where my brain went? All right. I, you can't see my stars. I like my stars. So a deal is struck. The people uh, will, will leave offerings to the Olympian gods and as such will be allowed to live. But the question remains, what bits of any given animal will the people eat and which bits will be offered? Prometheus sets himself up to be the mediator. Of this, uh, of this little exchange, this deal-making process. And uh, what he does is pretty tricky. Prometheus, uh, he slaughters a cow, he cuts it up, he, you know, gets all the different bits of everything. I was gonna say meat, but he gets the bones and everything as well, right? And he separates it into two sacks. One sack is all the bones and like the gross gizzity bits and it's like Ugh, it's not it's not particularly appetizing and not a lot of it is food the other sack contains all the actual meat all the actual flesh of the cow to be uh, mm -mm -mm, eaten devoured but what he does is that he he takes uh, a, a delicious <laughs> they tell us it's delicious looking so we just got to go with it okay but just bear with me a delicious layer of mm, slick glistening cow fat and slaps it on top of the bag full of bones. Mm-mm, delicious cow fat. The bag full of all the goodies, all the good bits, he, he takes the stomach of the cow and he, uh, he lays it over the top of the bag full of goodies so that it doesn't look appetizing. And let me tell you, this story and looking up why that would be gross, looking up the stomach, ugh, the stomach lining. This is how I discovered I have trypophobia, folks. Oh my gosh, I can't, I can't even think about it. I just need a minute, just give me a second. It's real gross. It's real disgusting to look at. It makes me feel like I am going to die. Tripe looks like the sensation of the overwhelming, crushing fear of oblivion. So let's just move on, shall we? That's how he separates the sacks. And Prometheus goes to Zeus. He says, look, I know that you might think I'm biased, but 
I don't want this to, to go down badly. I want there to be no bad blood between us in this deal, all right? And clearly Prometheus has heard that tactic when kids have to like share food or whatever. You get the first kid to cut the slice of cake, but the second kid gets to pick it. You know what I'm talking about? So you gotta share, so then it makes the first one want to cut them as even as possible so that they don't miss out on getting the bigger half. Prometheus is treating Zeus like a child, is what I'm saying, and who can blame him? So he says, here, we have divided all the stuff into two sacks, but you, Zeus, you get to choose which sack you want. And forevermore, during offerings, that is the, the, that is the bit of the animal that the Olympians will get, that you'll get. And Zeus is looking at these these sacks of cow and going, mmm, I, I get to make this delicious decision right here. And he goes straight for that cow fat. He falls for it, hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> Zeus is a big fan of fat. Give him that slimy, sloppy, slubbery goodness that is cow fat. <laughs> and so, condemns himself and the Olympians to forevermore only getting the bones and the fat during offerings. But Zeus isn't quite stupid enough to not see what has happened here, and he is so angry about it. And he decides, fine, two can play at this game, you want to be tricksy, I'll be tricksy too. No fire for humanity. It's not really tricksy, but you know, I'll give it to him. Humanity can have all the best bits of the meat, but what are they gonna do with it when they can't cook it? Because they don't got no fire. Suck on that. And at this point, Prometheus gets really worried about his creation. They're starting to freeze to death, they're starting to starve. I mean, I guess they can eat like, like some bugs or mushrooms or whatever. You don't have to cook everything, but it's still not like good. And Prometheus, who taught mankind so many things already, boat making, architecture, all sorts of things, decides that his people need the spark of creativity that is flame. But how's he gonna get that to him? Uh, it's locked up on Olympus. You know what he's gonna do? He's gonna talk to his best wisdom buddy. He's gonna talk to Athena. The two of them meet up all clandestine-like and uh, Athena slips Prometheus the key to the back door of Olympus. You know, those keys to mountains. And in the dead of night, as the sun is nestled in its holding nook, Prometheus slips in through the back, creeps on up to the sun, and he steals an ember from it, stuffs it in a fennel stalk, and he legs it out of there, conveying fire to humanity once more, and enabling us to, like, eat and survive winter. You know, just the creature comforts. Zeus finds out again! Oh boy, if he was mad last time, he is livid now. I say that with a joking tone, but it really is horrible. He, uh, <laughs> he has some of his, uh, his lackeys, one of whom is Kratos. Ah. He has them uh, seize Prometheus and drag him off to the Caucasus Mountains, where Prometheus is chained to a wall or a pillar, and for the rest of eternity, every day, an eagle, the eagle of Zeus, will come and will peck out his liver, or will just pull it on out of his body very slowly throughout the day and eat it while Prometheus is alive. He is immortal. And then overnight, while freezing to death, well, to not death, Prometheus's liver will grow back in an equally painful process. This just happens every day, day in, day out, for forever. But not forever, because guess what happens? Twist ending to the story. Heracles, at some point during his travels, during his 12 labors, he sees the eagle attacking a guy, and Heracles shoots it on out of the sky, just completely takes it down, and he ends up having a chat with Prometheus and finding out what has happened here, and Heracles goes and has a has a little heart to heart with his dad and says, can we maybe let him go now? It's been a while. And Zeus doesn't feel good about it, but he says, all right, okay, you like this guy, fine. If you can find an immortal willing to die, then I will let Prometheus go. Which, lucky for everyone, uh, <laughs> Heracles had already previously accidentally poisoned Chiron, the centaur, the the smart centaur guy who trained like a bunch of the heroes and uh, Chiron can't die so he's just been sort of in agony from hydro poison for the last however many years and he's like please please I volunteer just let me die please and so Prometheus gets to be free freedom that's what he says and that's that's that 
I'm trying to think if I've missed anything. Hopefully I haven't, otherwise I'm not very good at my job. I hope that you enjoyed the story. Uh, apart from that, I do believe that's it. I'm done. Email this to your grandma. I'm very suspicious that I've forgotten something. I'll see you some other time. Bye! Freedom Las Vegas! Freedom! It's not a song. It's, it's Viva. Viva Las Vegas.